our man Ephraim Salam. What's up, bro? What's happening, man? How y'all doing? We are good. We are good. It's spicy up in here, so get I ready. Heard was, I heard y'all was in there fist fighting. <laughs> no fist fighting. It's just called a debate, a conversation. <laughs> right. You know how we do. Um, I do know how you do. But anyway, let's start here, and uh, hopefully we can keep it simple. What Just what are your thoughts on Jonathan Taylor not being traded, and what do you see? Like, he's in a, a sticky situation. You know, he's on the pup yeah. list. I assume, assuming he'll be physically able to play later this season, do, he's going to get paid no matter what, right? So do you yeah. think he should play and kind of reestablish himself as a great player, at least try to? Or do you think he should sit out and just become a free agent and see what he gets going forward? Well, the only thing you can do in this situation um, as a player is control the thing you can control, and that's how you play. So you got to remember, we're all professionals, a professional athletes. You may not be happy with your contract. You, n- you may not be happy with how your team value you or devalue you. Uh, but – as a professional athlete, as someone who's going to work, who's under contract, you just got to go do your thing. You got to go up and you got to show up and show out, right? Because you're as good as your last in the NFL. He comes back off this PUP after four games, uh, and then he hits the ground running like we've known him, like we've right. known him to be, then his value, all he can do is increase his value. He can't diminish his value if he's the player that he has been since he's been in the league. So my advice to him would be like, hey, man, I know it sucks, it's terrible, but go out there and you just be you. I don't want you to change who you are as a player and as a teammate because of something else that you can't control. So Josh Jacobs led the league in rushing, and what did that get him? Nothing. $11 million. Yeah, that got him. But they're they're in a different – No, my my, my point to you, Ephraim, is that sounds good and logical, okay? I get it. But, but at some point, until you fight this system, that is, until people are willing to fight a system that is unfair to those guys, use up my best years, and then I don't get paid. Who, who would sign up for that? I mean, if you know that going in, who would sign up? Nobody would sign up for that. Well, yeah, nobody's going to sign up for that, but he's not signing up for it. He's already in it. <laughs> He's not he's coming out of college like he's already in it. He's uh, he signed the contract. He it, he was drafted. This is fifth year option. So the the market is what the market is. He can't buck against that now. Like I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. He's still a relatively young. He is a young man. He's got plenty of plenty of yards and carries left on that body. So what he needs to do is get back on the get back on the field and then just be that player. Be that guy. Uh, in the locker room, because it's not—it's not just him. It's the, it's the guys in the locker room. It's it's helping the young quarterback. It's all of these things that make you a great teammate and a great player. I wanted to ask you that, Eve, from Anthony Richardson, obviously raw, uh, young quarterback with a lot of talent. How much will having or not having a Jonathan Taylor impact him? Like, if he's got a great running back, is that going to help him? as a rookie quarterback who with his skill set, or yeah. I've heard some people say it, it it doesn't matter as much. I think it does. Where are you at on that? I, I think it does. So you ask about Peyton Manning when he came to the league, would he would have rather had uh, Marshall Falk with him like he did or not? Right. right? So when, right. You're, when you're talking about that caliber of running back, of course uh, that have a- asked Dak Prescott, would he rather have Zeke or not have Zeke his rookie year? So for him, you need all the weapons you can. I always say a young quarterback's best friend, number one, is a, is a defense. Number two is a tight end and a running back. Yeah, uh, uh, Ursay, I'd have a hard time working for that guy, just the, the, the disrespect of my value and what I've done. How, how do you move past that? Like, like I would have no relationship with that dude, uh, just that you know, I, I've given I, my blood, sweat, and tears to the organization, and you paid everybody else, and we've seen all these other guys get paid, and now my turn comes, and I'm not getting anything. I remember my, I remember my fourth year in the league. I was a seventh-round draft pick. I hadn't really made any money yet. And I'd been starting for the first, the first three years in the league. And they high-tendered me. 
Uh, and for whatever reason, I was upset. I wanted a bigger contract, and I was—I think I was slated to make like one point two million dollars, ten times more than I had made. And I was upset. And my dad said, "Hey, look here, man. You are a professional athlete. You're in the NFL. All right. Like professionalism isn't just oh you made it. It's how you work, how you show up." He said, "So go control the things you can control." You can't control when you play or how long you play, but you can control how you play. So you go to work because you're under contract. You show up, you show out, and the rest will take care of itself. And it did. I left you know, Atlanta after that year and went on to uh, the Denver Broncos and went on for the remainder, you know, nine years of my career. So you just have to keep in mind that you're a professional athlete. You're you're. A, one of a handful of people who can do what you're doing at the level you can do. And the better you are, the smaller that hand gets. So, look, he just got to have faith in himself and go out there and work, and the rest will take care of itself. Yeah, I, I think, Ephraim, I was thinking about this. Um, he, If he sits out, I think the best deal he would get would probably be, I mean, Dalvin Cook got about $6 million from the Jets. And it could be up to eight and a half million. With Jonathan Taylor coming off an injury, we haven't seen him play, you know, the ankle injury, and then doesn't play this entire year. Yeah, you don't. I don't think he, yeah, people would want, he hadn't had a chance to show he's fully back from the injury. Whereas if he does play this year, he, and he show, you know, plays one, he runs the risk of if he doesn't play well. But if he does play great, that even if the Colts franchise him, he getting ten million versus what, what, exactly. what he could get on the market. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't made any, he hasn't made any money. His total our contract was worth seven million dollars, and right. four million of that he's getting now. So I, he hasn't really made the money that the other running backs are, that are in this position have made yet. So you, you got to really look at the situation. Like, look here, man. I can't go and be worse than I was. Right, I can't go diminish my value. All I can do is increase my value. And with increasing your value, somebody's going to want that. So you come back, you help uh, Josh Richardson get, become a better quarterback. You, in that division, which is winnable, you win that division. Now you're adding value. You're not taking away value. You come How back. How about if he plays games. poorly? How about if he plays poorly and, and they no just put goes in and, they, and no they put athlete, no. No, I'm asking. I'm asking you for a real question. I, they got a rookie yes, quarterback. They put yes. ten people in the box and you can't yep. run mm-hmm. anywhere. And they say the kid is going to throw throw the ball the whole game and you're not getting any yards. How does so, that help him? No, no athlete goes into the season saying I'm going to play poorly. That's not what Especially, I said. That's not what I, I said. I just gave you a scenario. For I him, you, yes, 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 a scenario. That's a great scenario, but I'm talking about the mind state of him. Like, I, beyond whether he plays or plays well or not, as, as long as he shows up and gives what he can give, every if they got nine, ten people in the box, they got nine, ten people in the box. But he's going into it like, yo, I, if I miss these first first four games, I can still get twelve hundred, thirteen hundred yards rushing. And if he does that, trust me, brother, his value is going to skyrocket it won't stay the same it'll go higher um Ephraim before you go I think a team that's going to surprise some folks this year is the Steelers agree disagree I agree I, I mean you you saw what Mike Tomlin did right yeah. that's all I, in, in our <laughs> black community that's all we need we we he brought the whole team all black Air Force Ones yeah that's I, wish, I wish how, would, how I wish I wish I wish Mike Tomlin would hire room. more black assistant uh, 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 coordinators, because he's only had one in all the years he's been there. All I wish I he would do right that. Now, you could buy all the black, black sneakers Force you ones. want. They I would love for Mike Tomlin to give black so we, uh, assistant coaches a chance of being coordinators. We know That's what, what I would love to see. All black Air Force Ones means. That's all business, player. You ever run up on somebody with all black Air Force Ones, just be like, hey, man, how you doing? And keep it moving. And that's that's what Mike Tomlin is instilling. Do your research right on now. Mike Tomlin's hiring of coordinators. Hey man, and then I, get back I'm to not. Me. I don't hire. I'm not doing that. You asked me, do I think the Steelers are going to be good? I you didn't ask me about the coordinators. I'm answering the court the question about do I think they're going to be good? That's what I'm answering, Rob. I'm sorry. I didn't want to get into a political debate with you right now. It's not political. It's called football. It's not political. Okay. What's political okay. about it? I'm not talking right. about the election. Whenever you. 
Okay. I see, I see what you mean. He is a little spicy today. Hey, man. I, it's spicy. It's you, you want a hug? this piece. I don't need no hug. I wish hey, I was Rob, in L.A. to get Rob. I, paid, I, I wish you. I was out there to when get When I was in Costa Rica, I paid for 100 chest. hugs. I'm, I'm good. I'm going to give you a oh, chest-to-chest chest hug, go. man. I'm going to give you a chest-to-chest <laughs> chest hug, man. Man to man, chest-to-chest. That is our man. Check him out here every weekend on Fox Sports Radio. NFL, former NFL veteran, Ephraim Salam. Great stuff, man. We appreciate you. Absolutely, brother. Y'all stay safe.